welcome to Bay Area Art Beat. What a pleasure to be at the Oakland Museum speaking to Peggy Monahan and in the midst of the Burning Man exhibit. Please tell us about it. Sure. The exhibition is No Spectators, The Art of Burning Man, and it was originally created um, by the curators at the Renwick Gallery of the Smithsonian American Art Museum. And we were um, excited to bring it here because we can bring all these artworks home. So much of this art was created by folks in the Bay Area, and in fact, uh, that's reflective of the fact that Burning Man started in the Bay Area. The first, the first burn was on Baker Beach more than 30 years ago. Um, and even though Burning Man is an internationally attended festival um, event, <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, so many of the participants and so many of the artists are from the Bay Area that um, it was pretty amazing to look down the list and see how, how well the Bay Area Art community was represented in this exhibition. Um, would you like to say something about the works in the in the gallery? Oh, sure. <laughs> um, the exhibition has both art um, from Burning Man and also a section about the history of Burning Man. Uh -huh. The art pieces include um, large pieces of illuminated art, like the um, Hibikoza pieces by Hibikozo um, behind us, or some giant Truman Lumen, um, giant um, shape-changing mushrooms by Fold House. Um, both of those are, are local folks, um, local groups. Uh, there's, uh, there are mutant vehicles, which are um, uh, sort of the art cars that roam the playa um, at, the, at Burning Man, and um, uh, including the Capitol Theater, um, which is created by uh, a, an Oakland artist collective named Five Ton Crane um, that has an entire uh, silent movie theater um, on, on, uh, on wheels. Mm. Um, and uh, the paper arch by Michael Garlington and Natalia Bartotti um, that is covered with collaged photography. Oh, wow. um, and uh, um, that piece is um, so... In, so uh, finely detailed, you could look at it for hours, I think. Just, yeah. just yeah. even counting the number of uh, owls or eyeballs <laughs> um, on it. Yeah. Um, there are also um, a burning, the outfits that burners wear, yeah. um, uh, because part of the art that the burning man, that the burners bring to the, to the event is themselves. Yeah. And, um, and also tons of, uh, of jewelry and pendants that uh, artists make to bring as gifts yeah. that they give to each other on, on the playa. This is, I, I came uh, to the press opening and I'm just at a different angle and even yeah. just looking at these pieces yeah. from one way rather than another, it's, it, yeah. I, I mean, I, I really want to encourage people to come and spend some time yeah. here. Absolutely. I, uh, the name No Spectators is there because um, so much of this art is participatory in an exhibition, um, in, mostly in the um, museum we tell you what things you can touch because those things are so are, are rare yeah. um, but in this exhibition um, you can touch most of it. Oh that's great. <laughs> um, yeah and uh, there's uh, most of the pieces of the artwork is stuff that you can interact with um, because participation is such a, um, such an important part of the Burning Man experience. Oh great. Uh, this program will, go, will be playing the whole month of January. Okay. I, it goes through the month and, uh, three times a week <laughs> for the whole month. But uh, is there a, other events coming up in January about uh, involved with the show that you would like to tell people um, about? Yes. Um, in January, January 9th? Of, no. Um, it, there's a, a, a late night. I'm, I'm sorry. It's January 9th. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Uh, in January 9th, Thursday night, we have a special evening um, where we are, will be open late and uh, where the, you can come and see the exhibition in the evening um, and even bring your drinks inside the exhibition and socialize while you do so. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> um, so that, that'll be an important, a, a fun time to come. Yeah, and to see the pieces lit up at night is yeah. really amazing. You know, one of the pieces that we have um, made specifically for the Oakland Museum is a temple by artist David Best. Mm -hmm. um, the temple is uh, 
key part of the Burning Man event. Um, it's burned on the last night of, uh, of, the, of the week. And it, uh, it's all week long, people visit a temp the temple every year. And um, it's a place of, of, of remembering and memorial um, and uh, deep thoughtfulness. And people leave memories of people and of events for the year. And then at the end of the um, event, it's burned. Wow. Um, and um, we have uh, a temple that was built for us by the artist who really um, began the tradition of um, building temples at Burning Man because he's just from Petaluma, artist David Best, and yeah. that temple is outside. And okay. so um, it's visiting it at night is particularly spectacular yeah. it, because it, seeing it lit up, it's a really intense, um, in, intensely detailed uh, wooden structure. Yeah, it's extraordinary. And people are invited to uh, write messages directly on the temple um, of, of oh, memory wonderful. of people um, that uh, and of uh, um, things that they want to memorialize and also write on uh, little wooden cards. Oh, great. Um, we are going to, we, we can't burn our <laughs> temple because it's uh, um, on in our garden at our outside <laughs> patio. So it's essentially on a roof of other offices, so we can't burn it where it is. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But instead, what we're going to do is package up the um, the wooden pieces that people leave, um, and uh, the, we're partnering with the Burning Man Project to take those out to the playa and burn them after. Oh, the, great! What's going to happen to the temple? Um, well, it's going to be outside all winter long, oh, so we're, we're, we'll see what happens. <laughs> so we're not sure, but we're definitely going to honor the thing, the memories that people leave in this. Yeah. Well, thank you so, so much. Oh, I wanted to ask you about upcoming events oh, and things, sorry. but people can people can check it. Just yes. know that when you make a trip to the Oakland Museum, you're going to love the show and yeah. you're going to love what's coming up. Yeah, sure. um, yes, yeah. Peggy, it's been a great well, pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so nice to talk to you. Thanks. Thank you. And, uh, sure. Welcome back to Bay Area Art Beat. I'm at the Oakland Museum, and one of the artists who has a wonderful piece in the show, we're going to see, um, is with us. Bree, do you want to say something about yourself quickly? Sure. Um, I am part of a, an art collective here in Oakland called Five Ton Crane, and we build art collectively all together. And I'm really excited to be talking to you about the work that we all do. Great. What, what, is, what do you have in the show here? In the show, we have a large-scale piece that you can get inside of called the Capitol Theater. We show six films that oh. I made with my movie-making partner, Alan White. Great. And they're all original silent films, so visitors can come and they can come inside of the theater. They can sit and watch films. They can talk with each other. Sometimes we're here and we can talk with you and show you Great. some things that aren't open all of the time. We have a concession stand and sometimes we sell tickets for the price of a, a joke or a song. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. So it's still going with barter and exchange and uh, not barter, but just gifting. Yeah, just yeah, gifting. Great. And we have these beautiful tickets that uh, Yubin Lee on our crew designed for the theater. Yeah. 
Yeah. Have you done? How long have you done Burning? Have you've been doing Burning Man in the desert? Uh, since 2004, that was my first year out there. Great. I've been many of the years, but not all of them. Yeah, yeah. And like, that is, does the collective go there and do the work, or do you mainly do the work? <laughs> <laughs> We've done a number of projects together. Um, Five Ton Crane has brought, um, I think, f uh, four, maybe four large-scale pieces out there. And then people on our crew do projects on their own or with other crews also. So it's not, you know, being part of Five Ton Crane is not exclusive. You can go and work on other projects uh, outside why, of why Five you're Ton there. Crane. Or, you know, here oh. in the Bay Area and then oh, bring great. it out there. I've worked on projects with other friends and other crews also. Oh, good. So yeah. what other things have you worked on? The first piece that I did out there was called the Moonshine Saloon. It oh. was a 15 by 20 foot battery powered Wild West saloon oh. on wheels. So we drove it around and um, it had a few steps up to the you know, swinging saloon doors with oh. a long horn over it. And uh, we just built it, a group of friends. It was, you know, we had scraped together what we could. And what we found was that it was so much fun to bring, you know, for people to come on board and then, yes. and then then they're in our drama in a sense and we all found our own roles in it without without discussing it we just had on an alter ego and and it was like a theater in a sense and if you came on board you were in the show oh that's great and that was and that experience we took it out for three years that experience is the inspiration for the Capitol theater I see to bring people on board and and create this space for them to play oh wonderful and to be in this this alternative world in yeah. a sense. So you did the saloon for three years and then you did the theater? With a long, with many, many years in between. Uh, we <laughs> yeah. built, the, we built the, the Wild West Saloon in 2005. Yeah. So we took it out 2005, six and seven. Yeah. And then we built this, uh, we finished it in 2018. Great. So a Great. lot of time in between. Is there anything else you're doing besides Burning Man, or is that the main thing, your main uh, <laughs> art expression? <laughs> that, that has been the main thing for a number of years. Yeah. It, takes, it takes a lot to put together a piece like this. I would imagine, sure. Um, we, we built this in uh, just shy of 11 weeks. Wow. But there was a lot of planning ahead of time yeah. that we worked on. There was engineering and design yeah. so that you know, we're, we're able to have a lot of pieces cut and made and we have clear plans. So we're not winging it when yeah. we have those, you know, 10 and a half weeks. Yeah. We're, we're set with what we have to do. Yeah. And so there's a lot of work that goes into that plan. Right. Do you get grants or what enables you the freedom to do this? <laughs> <laughs> We've been extremely fortunate and are thankful to a number of, of people who have supported this work for us. Yeah, that's yeah. that. It's so great. <laughs> it's the way it should be. It is. Um, <laughs> what are your future plans? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Been asking yourself that, right? <laughs> Definitely. Um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, there's a lot. There's there's a couple coals in the fire right now, but we'll see what actually happens. Yeah, you spend the entire week out there at Burning Man yourself. At the, in the desert or? For the, for the years that we bring a project out there, I'm usually out there for at least two weeks. Yeah. Because you need to come and set up and then there's the week of the event and then you have to stay and take it all down and pack it all up and take it away. So yeah. um, that's at least two weeks with a large scale project. It, it takes about a week to set these up. Some, some people have projects that take longer, but yeah. um, that's, that's about how long we've we've taken. Although with an art car, it takes less time. It's taken less time for us because it's been closer to finished. There's less setup to do oh, when we you, arrive. You do an art car. The Moonshine Saloon was an art car. Oh, oh. Uh, the Nautilus Submarine by Five Ton Crane was also an art car, and oh, I've great. been a part of several other art cars. Oh, great! Is yeah. this is this a, um, an art car? I'm so this is an art car in a sense. Um, because of the weight restrictions on the floor in the Smithsonian at the Renwick, ah. we couldn't put a drive system in it. it. The floor couldn't have held that weight. We were pretty much maxed out on, on weight there. 
Yeah. Uh, it is a hope that at some day, at some <laughs> point, we will be able to make it drive. Yeah. But what was it like know. working at the Smithsonian? I mean, to me, that's whoo. <laughs> <laughs> It was terrific. Uh, yeah. We also, you know, the Renwick is an old building and yeah. there is no freight elevator. There's, there's only one way to load in and that's through the front door. <laughs> so we went and measured the width of, of all of the doorways that we had to pass to get our piece yeah. into the room we were in and we built this to fit that space. Very smart. Very <laughs> smart. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you and um, really going back to the, the theater <laughs> with a deeper knowledge of what you do. Um, Thank you so much. It's been really nice talking with you. <laughs> we'll be back with our next guest shortly and put this on your list of things to do. Welcome back to Bay Area Art Beat. Our next guest, Rachel McCrafty, uh, has a, well, Rachel, tell us about what you have in the show. Um, so the, the experience that I've brought to the show um, is an interactive area and installation called Giftomatic. And the centerpiece of it is a giant machine that references old vintage gumball machines that distributes gifts and it also takes it gifts in. And you don't have to do one to do the other. It's not a transaction. And so that's the centerpiece of the experience. And then there's also an area that has um, opportunities for guests to actually do hands-on activities and express themselves and give gifts. So you get to receive, you get to give. And then the third part of that area is an area called the Give Yourself the Gift of Chill Lounge. And you literally get to gift yourself a moment to take some time aside, have a moment of chill, and just absorb what has been probably a really intense experience, because this exhibit is just wow. <laughs> um, so that's the Giftomatic experience. Oh, great. Talk about the idea of gifting at, the, um, at Burning Man. I mean, it's a basic principle of Burning Man, right? It's a basic principle of Burning Man, and it's really interesting what people do with it and how people receive it. Um, a gift is something that you give without expectation of return, and that means no return, not another gift, not social capital, no expectation. And in our society, that's not a common thing. Um, very often people are confused with it. They're like, what? It's not a trade. I'm not expecting karma. <laughs> and um, it's a little step outside the everyday that what is wonderful about it brings connection, mm. both for the person giving and receiving um, in a way that other things don't. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it could be a hug or a smile or... Yeah. I, I, as we're, we're coming into the holiday season, what about re-gifting? <laughs> if you don't like your gift, you give it to somebody else. Or. Um, if you're passing on that experience and truly like, creating an opportunity for somebody to appreciate something, yay, re-gifting. 
Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it's the continuation of the intention of the person who gave to you. Yeah, yeah. And, and really at Burning Man, it can be anything. I remember it was day four after an intense build and then day four of the burn, and one of the best gifts I ever got was somebody washing my hair. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was tired, I was hangry, and they were just like, here, have a moment. And it was, I was just like, this is the best gift experience ever. <laughs> well, the, the, whole, the whole thinking about giving gifts and you know, what somebody really needs, what you can do for them, it's, it's beautiful. And it, it, it really is. Yeah, yeah. We, we should have more um, hair washes during the <laughs> holiday season. <laughs> Things like, or I chill so. lounges. <laughs> I, I really do think so. Um, one of the things that was just so exciting about bringing the gift of matic installation to the museum was bringing that shared experience of gifting that happens on the playa into a broader audience. Yeah. And then it's fascinating seeing what people do with it yeah. because this is a, you know, it's a much more diverse group right. that are coming to the museum. Right. And with uh, definitely much more broad cultures that they're bringing with them to interpret that experience. Yeah. And so um, every weekend um, there's, there's burner volunteers who come to it. And every other weekend I come in and do special activities and I get to just observe what people do. And for me, that's the gift I'm receiving. Yeah, yeah. Where I'm just, I'm fascinated with the authenticity people bring the immediacy that children bring. <laughs> um, yeah. They are so honest. Um, and, it's, and it's really great. Um, even when it's not in the frame of gifting. Yeah. When they're just experiencing it and what they're bringing to the table and, yeah. inter and how they're interpreting it. Now what brought you to where you are now? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, an amazing friend group. Um, 20 years ago when I moved up to the Bay Area, I landed in this amazing community that um, landed me with no short order into um, building projects at NIMBY, building projects in people's garages for Burning Man, uh, contributing to menus that would last, um, building costumes galore, um, and camping in a village called the Blue Light District, mm. um, which is a very old established camp. And um, being part of that community was so different than where I had come from because they really made space for me not to just be a contributor, but also to be an individual yeah. in everything that I did. Yeah. Um, I could just be me. I didn't have to be the person who takes care of you know, XYZ thing or builds XYZ thing. Yeah. And that was really transformative yeah. and allowed me to be brave as an artist in a way that I hadn't been before. Yeah. What, what's a NIMBY build? So NIMBY is um, an art space that started out in Berkeley, um, oh. and it's one of the, you know, core original industrial art spaces. Uh -huh. um, NIMBY, of course, spans, stands for not, not in my, my backyard. I know. <laughs> um, and uh, their last home in Oakland um, was down by the Coliseum, and I had friends who needed to build things and <laughs> needed a costumery and, and, and things like that and found myself in a warehouse at midnight building a giant pizza oven chariot for Roman centurions. And there I was. <laughs> and, um, and that community was amazing. Um, it's really unfortunate that they recently had to leave the Bay Area uh, because they got green zoned out. Um, and it's a, it really is a great loss. Program. Yeah, it, it, it puts forth the projects we have to keep working on. Mm -hmm. And um, the zoning and those things are, yeah. are really big. And to keep people here, I, am, I mean, one of my passions is to keep people here. Yeah. Um, uh, so anything else coming up for you? Yes. Um, we're looking at the next home for the gift o yeah. and um, looking at uh, petitioning um, bringing it to the regional burn in Santa Cruz oh. and a, a potentially bringing it into other public venues so that people can play with the idea of it yeah. and also experience the content of it and have right. that be accessible. And really, I'm not sure what my next big project is going to be. 
Uh, unfortunately, um, my studio, which had my collection of tools and an art of 20 years, burned down in August. Oh, no. Um, at the Moxie Industrial Arts Space Warehouse Fire, oh. which fortunately nobody was hurt because it was an yeah. extremely well-run space yeah. um, and still is. But I'm, I'm at this place of opportunity with it now okay. where I'm like, what will be my next thing? Okay. What, what mediums will I return to? Okay. <laughs> what will I step away from? What might I go into and explore? Um, the things that most excite me, though, are always going to be building in community and really the things that capture my imagination are things that create opportunities for people to express themselves have agency and connect with each other. Rachel, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> really, good luck with, with whatever it is. I'm sure it's going to be exciting. Thank yeah, you so I'm much. excited. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> no, it'll be great. Um, so thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back next month. And in the meantime, come and see this incredible show at the Oakland Museum and stay amazed. <laughs> So, uh...